Michael Froman was one of the board members targeted by Nelson Peltz to be replaced. He survived that challenge this week and was reelected to the board. Michael joins us now to talk about uh, Disney, but also we want to talk about the geopolitical headlines that are moving the markets this morning. He, of course, is now the president on the Council on Foreign Relations and previously served as a U.S. trade representative. Uh, let's uh, let's go to your own survival first, and then maybe we'll talk about the survival of the world. Um, well, just what was it like over the past couple of months and, and weeks in this process? Well, look, I think if there's a silver lining to these processes, it's that it gives you an opportunity as board members and senior management to spend a lot of time with investors and hear directly from them uh, their interests and concerns, have a really good dialogue with them. So, uh, so it actually was quite constructive in that regard. Now, it, it was a distraction for the senior management in particular from the strategic priorities that the company has to execute on, and now they can get back to that. What was your reaction to uh, Nelson Peltz's comments yesterday? And this idea that he may not actually be going away. This is a point that we just talked about on the broadcast. We've been talking about actually for several weeks that even, even, even in a moment of winning, if you will, that there's the possibility that this isn't really over. I think the company is very much focused right now on just executing on the strategic priorities. The company's going through a generational transformation. Bob Iger's laid out a strategy for dealing with that from streaming to sports to the parks. Um, and I think right now it's just focusing on right. doing that. And we've seen the last couple quarters but great is your results. But expectation that, I mean, we were talking about Ike Perlmutter. Is the expectation that Ike Perlmutter ultimately sells his shares in Disney, in which case then, then this type of uh, campaign can't happen again or is unlikely to happen again? Do you think that Nelson walks away and sells his shares? Or do I, don't, I think it's very hard to predict. I don't think we have any visibility into that. All we can do is focus on executing on the strategic priorities and having the company perform better and better, and the stock will hopefully uh, reflect that. What did you hear? What are the biggest couple of sh shareholder concerns and issues? Yeah, you know, shareholders wanted to talk about the, the streaming business and how to get to profitability, and, and Bob laid out uh, the strategies around that. Uh, wanted to talk about the allocation of capital to expand the experiences, the parks, the cruise lines, and things of that sort. Very much wanted to talk about succession as well and what the succession process is. We've got a committee that Mark Parker of, of Nike uh, chairs and James Gorman of Morgan Stanley's on. Both have gone through very successful CEO transitions. And so I think it gave a lot of reassurance to the investors about those important issues. Let's pivot uh, to what's going on in the Middle East right now. Somewhat more important. It is more important. And I think we're all trying to understand where this is all headed. We were talking about uh, the price of crude going up given on the back of, of, of what Iran may or may not do, but just from your vantage point, 30,000 feet, where are we? How close are we to something really tragic and terrible happening uh, beyond the tragedy that we already are in? Well, I think we've been concerned from the start, from October 7th, that this could expand into a bigger regional conflict. And, you know, thus far, there have been uh, some attacks by Iranian proxies uh, from Hezbollah, from Lebanon into Israel, but also in, in Iraq and, and Syria, and of course the Houthis from, from Yemen. Um, I think the concern right now is that with the attack in Damascus on IRGC leadership, Iran is threatening to take retaliatory action. Is it by unleashing further Hezbollah? Is it by attacking Israeli diplomatic sites? Is it by attacking soft sites of the Jewish communities around the world like they did with Argentina several years ago. And so that's, I think, the concern right now. On the other side, of course, the most immediate concern is getting humanitarian aid into Gaza and ensuring that as Israel continues to prosecute its campaign against the remaining Hamas brigades, that they're doing so in a way that spares civilians. Well, let's talk about that because that is the political issue here in the United States. And there is now a clear divide, or at least appears to be a clear divide, between the Biden administration and Netanyahu in terms of how they're going about this and how you think it may change or or not the relationship? Well, I think the Biden administration has been saying for some time and urging Israel for right. some time to further allow humanitarian aid into Gaza and to take the civilian uh, uh, concerns even more seriously than they do. They've been frustrated by Netanyahu's failure to do that or what they perceive to be his failure to do that. I think, though, it's important. We have to take a step back to 30,000 feet. We still have 100 hostages in Gaza, and Hamas is still fighting this war from within civilian populations or underneath civilian populations in the tunnels. That's part of the, 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 right. the nature of the problem. I think what's happened over the last uh, 48 hours or so is the Biden administration's clearly lost patience with Netanyahu, and we've seen some response now, including 
opening up the, the crossings in the north for further humanitarian aid, bringing in more aid through Ashtot, the, the port in Israel near Gaza. And, and hopefully um, there will be more dialogue with the Israelis about how they intend to protect civilians uh, as they further go into Rafah. Okay. Future of Netanyahu. It's really it's hard to say from the outside, right? Israeli politics are incredibly uh, complex. He clearly has control over the Likud party. Uh, Benny Gantz has called for elections in September, but whether he'd be able to put together a coalition uh, that would be sustainable at this time is, remains to be seen. So, you know, there's always the risk that outside pressure, including from a friend like the United States, further consolidates support behind Netanyahu. And right now, well, that's, what I was gonna, that, that's where I was going with this. Is, is there a possibility that there becomes a, a genuine divide between the United States and Israel? That the, that the special relationship that exists or has existed now for so long is, is broken and it is irreconcilable? Do we stop I don't think it's Do fully. We stop supplying uh, military. Military and other support. I don't think it is, is irre irrevocably broken. I think, as you recall, this week. They're still, we're still providing further planes, further munitions, right. even as we're putting pressure on Israel to change its policies and how it's prosecuting the campaign in Gaza. There's a lot of support for Israeli security. Israel needs to have secure borders. It's not sustainable that they've had to move 75,000 people from the north and 200,000 people from the south, and, we can't, and they can't occupy their own territory as a sovereign country. Okay, can I throw Russia and China into the mix of this whole situation? Uh, Janet Yellen's going to China. She's there. She's there. And she's going to be pushing them both on their relationship with Russia, with Iran, right? Is there, do we have any influence in this? And do you think that China wants, what is China's take on what's happening here? Look, China is very good at following its national interests narrowly defined. And I think uh, what, what uh, Secretary Yellen and what the Biden administration is, has been trying to do is underscore for China just how much is at stake for China in there being peace and stability in the Middle East and for the Ukraine war to be brought to a successful end. Y Yellen already saying this morning that we don't want to decouple. That's her message that she's bringing. But it was wrapped in some pretty tough talk about the idea that if there's going to be a trade relationship between us, it needs to be an equitable one. Which of those messages will the Chinese hear more loudly, which matters more, or does none of that matter and it's really Taiwan? Well, I think it does matter, and I, I think uh, those are not irreconcilable messages either. I think uh, there can be a very productive trading relationship with China in non-strategic goods, for example, goods that aren't necessarily supporting their military or, or intelligence uh, capabilities. And we're still very concerned about their building overcapacity, including in electric vehicles, clean energy equipment, things of that sort that could disrupt the global markets and undermine our capacity China to participate. Like being told what to do within its own no country, system. no country does, and yet they have benefited enormously. If you look back over the last few decades, from a benign international environment that's allowed them to grow the way that they've grown, that the, the, the grown that environment is changing, and I think they're beginning to realize that all this reaction from the U.S., from Europe, Japan, Korea, other countries. Is having a negative effect. I don't ultimately. know if it's that, or if they're just in a position where their economy is not as strong, and so they can't be as strident as they've been to this point. They've got look, they've got some serious economic problems now, and they're trying to figure out how to get out of them. Uh, but their traditional way, which would be to export their way out of the problem, isn't going to be available to them if the U.S. and Europe close their markets. And that's what's really at risk: is that we may be on the verge of a situation where we say, well, in fact. In one sector after another, right. we're just not willing to take Chinese imports, regardless of what the WTO rules are. Throw one last one at you. You on TikTok? What's that? Are you on TikTok? No, I'm not. Do you have a view whether TikTok is TikTok a chess piece in this whole little dance? I don't what have. I, I don't have. I don't have a view. It on came it. up apparently in the conversation between uh, Biden and Xi on the phone, and I'm curious whether no, you, I, I'm I sure it's going to come up in the Yellen conversations too. It, it, it could well. I have not been privy to any of the intelligence briefings that people have seen right. down in Washington that have raised uh, raised concerns uh, about about TikTok, um, but uh, but I imagine it'll be part of the conversation there.